Hey, hey, hey guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am here with Russian Fishing 4 yet again on the Winding Rivulet. And we're going to be taking a look at the Winding Rivulet for the next few episodes, just because there's all kinds of good places to fish and specific species to look forward to, depending on the weather. Right now it's clear, so that's probably going to mean I'm going to go after pike this time. But one thing, I don't know if... Uh, some of you newcomers have uh, noticed this, but this leaderboard that they've got right here. Now people are like, oh yeah, let's see. I'd have to catch this big of a fish or whatever. What this leaderboard is really good for, guys, for me, is if I'm trying to catch a certain species or if I want to see what they're catching it on, I will come here, let's say for instance pike, and these are what the champion trophy pikes here at this river have been caught on. So that way you kind of have an idea what you can try with and see what they might, you know, what you can use to try to catch them. Now I've got these, I've got that. I don't have this one or this one, but I've got this one up here. And I tell you, this one, the Vico 25 grams is a killer. It really works well for both pike and chubs so that's definitely one you want to pick up as soon as you can I think it's like 25 silver maybe 35 silver it's, it's not cheap but it is well worth it guys so I'm trying to decide if I might yeah I think what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna go over here see on the map it seems like a lot of people and I included tend to forget this area over here it's not very big because you can you can't really go here very far it's got like a wall right there and right here there's plenty of space but not a ton of it so I think it gets kind of overlooked but there are a lot of fish to be had here especially the pike and the chubs depending on the weather now, if the weather's dim, you'll get chubs. If the weather's sunny, pike. And sometimes at night, you might get the chubs. So it's a good idea to use something that they can see. And it seems like something pink or whatever is really helpful to use. Now, I'm going to change the lure I have on here. I was testing that one out. But this one here is really, really good for chubs. I catch them off of it all the time. So we're going to give this a try right now. That's the 8 ounce one. I've got a 26 ounce one too. I think it's 26 ounce. But let's see if we can get anything to bite this early in the morning. But you want to cast out towards the bridge. Now you might actually have cast the line over the bridge. It won't it won't get snagged on it. I do it all the time. <laughs> but I try to point it down so that I can see myself crank. And I put it at about 20 and do one turn. I think I've showed you guys this. This is a jig step. Now the pike are not going to usually see much this late. They will once the sun starts to come up but the chubs are a different matter. You all notice I did not put any feeder rods out because I want to focus on spin casting today because I want you all to see the good spots for catching pike and stuff like that using a spin, you know, spinning rod or a casting rod. Happen to have both, so we'll give them both a try. All right, one thing you can try over here, I don't know if you can see that log. Oop. Oh, let me do that again, guys, because you will get snagged if you hit that side over there. Don't want to throw it very hard because it's not that far across. That's good. But try to throw it at the base of that log. There's usually something under there, chubs, pike. And when it gets sunny, we might see some more pike. 
so far nothing's biting off of this so I might switch over to the pink one pink shows up very very good even in the dark so well it looks like I got something here uh, got a nice little rub river muscle that's always good yeah let's go ahead and switch over to the pink one for right now see if that does better in the dark oh there it is now, this is kinda big but for chubs but if we get a chub it's gonna be a big son of a gun again jig step And remember, you might get perch. They like this too. The perch will go to just about anything. There we go. I'm betting you that this is a chub. No, it's a pike. Well, he must have been paying attention. It's not a bad one. 1.253 kilograms. I'll keep him. Okay, I guess it's starting to get light enough for him. Alright, let's give that another try. Well, it's good to see him out early this morning. They love that pink lure. I don't know what it is about it, but they just love it. Wow. Yeah, they're biting early today. Let's get this guy in. Can't I think it's another pike, but I couldn't. Nope, it's a chub. Look at that size of that chub, guys. This is a good, good spot for them, I'll tell you. And just keep anywhere along here, it's good. They will bite. You might want to, you know, move it around a little bit. If it seems like it's slowing down, try a different spot. But right in front of that log is really good that's across from me. I'm going to try that after I get done retrieving this one. I think... The big, I wish they'd tell you where the, the people caught the big ones. <laughs> that way you'd know what area to fish out of. I guess it doesn't really matter. There's another one. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's a good spot. I think that's a chub. He's not fighting very much. Yep. It's not very big, but I'm going to throw this right over there. And like I said, just barely throw it. See, it's perfect right there. And I'm going to take it all the way out to here so that I can kind of drag it across in front of all that coverage. Now before I get to, there we go, told you. I told you. I told you they'd be there. Here's your pike. He's a little pike, but he's a pike. Pikes are pike. I don't care if they're little or not. They're fun to bring. Oh, that could be. I better be careful. That could be Snag City there. Okay, I think I'm all right. Whoa! There we go. He grabbed that on the flyby. There you go. Nice. I try to take pictures because sometimes I might decide to use this as a thumbnail. Now, you can fish over there on these sides. You've got to be careful, though, because, again, there's a lot of things to snag on, and that's an expensive lure. They're all 
pretty costly. You don't want to lose them. But pretty much the same thing. There's lots of reeds and stuff around. So these guys are all over here. There we go. Okay, this this is a good one. This is a good one. Now this is a pretty heavy line. I think it's 17 pound test. I will show you what gear I've got on here real quick after this is done. I did. Ooh, he is giving me a little bit of a fight here. I think it's a chub. Yeah, that's a chub. That's not a pike. Oh wow! Now that my friends is a nice chub 2.642 that is a nice chub 2640 total XP All right, we're gonna throw this right across there this time I had to stop it because it was gonna go into the weeds yeah this lure is great I'm surprised the chubs are biting so well for being sunny, but it's cold, so maybe that's part of it. It's only 10.3 10 de 10 degrees Celsius. Well, I'll tell you, they are definitely biting. Let's see, I think we got us another chub here. No, it's a little bitty pike. Keep him. Alright, let's... I'm going to switch over here. Before I leave that, though, I'm going to show you. Let me show you what I've got here. I am using a Trident Conquest 4500S. Now, this has got a maximum drag of 13 kilograms. This thing can bring in some pretty heavy-duty fish. And now, the weakest point, if you notice, guys, is my steel leader. It's only a 15 uh, pound test. Well, 15 kilogram, I should say. But it, you know, this can go heavier. This is 17. So I might need to come down a little bit on it. It's, But you want your weakest point to be pretty much in the leader or the line. You do not want it to be in the rod or this. That's bad. Now this can handle fish up to 35 kilograms, so I am not worried about the rod breaking. Now my other rod that I think I have in number two. Do I have it in number two? Let's find out. Nope. I got a feeder rod in number two. Let me bring it in there, guys. I eventually need to upgrade this guy, but it's not bad. I've got what's called a low profile casting reel. Now this you have to have 50% on your spin casting to get. You have to develop that skill to use this particular one. But it's got 7, seven kilogram, uh, 25 pound test line, and 17 pound liter. I don't have a lure on this one yet, but I need to get a bigger pole. That's one thing I want to do as soon as I can, because I think it only has like, oh, 15.5 kilogram capacity. So already this line's too heavy. So I need to get that down a little bit, but I just happened to have purchased a little bit more. I'm going to use this extra silk 17. That's better. That's much better. And I'm going to throw this... 25 gram one on there should be all right yep 40 to 120 so it should be good there so we're going to test that out a little bit see if they go after this lure now this doesn't cast nearly as far as the other rod does but it's very smooth i like the way it reels in you could see it easily it's also I don't know I just like the feel of it <laughs> if you can imagine that make sure make sure oh I gotta have it at 20 don't I yeah you're gonna have to cast this a lot harder
Now this uh, particular reel is the first of my low profile reels. So I was more or less just kind of testing it out. I bought it mainly because I got the skill. I couldn't get, I didn't have the cash to buy a bigger one than that, but I have a basic casting reel here that I can show you and I often use with this. Oh, you gotta put it in the backpack first. Here's the other one I have. This is a really heavy duty one. Nine kilogram max drag. So in this situation, it might be better for me to use this one as opposed to the low profile. And it's nice and smooth too, guys. I like it just because I like the, the red <laughs> too. But it casts a lot better than that other one too. I get some better distance. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get more 70 pound line. I have broken off most of mine. But there shouldn't be anything too big that's going to break it. Now watch something grab it and snap it like a twig. There we go. We got something here. I'm thinking it's a pike, guys. Now, if you're afraid it's going to bite through the leader, which I think I have a monofilament leader on here. If you hold it up, there's less chance of it breaking. See, he's little, so it wasn't that much of a problem. But I am going to change that to a... Well, all I have is a 22 pound. That's too heavy. That's just too heavy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get couple more liters. Need to get some more line anyway. It's been well overdue. Alright, liters. We need some steel liters here. Just, you got your Simmons steel, your heavy. Let's just go with the Simmons steel for now. Let's see, what do we got up to? 15? I'll just buy one of those. That should be good enough for here. Now later on we might want to get some of these. And these get pretty darn heavy. 45, 30. I don't need anything that heavy. So let's go over to... What was the other thing I need? <laughs> I was like, what was I here for? Line, that's right. Line, line, line. I like the extra silk a lot for this area. So let me find the extra silk here. The snake ultra line's good too. Uh, Simmons extra silk, where is it? There it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and buy quite a bit of it too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with 12 pound, because what I've got is just a little too heavy. All right, I had to take a little bit of a leave for a minute there. I mean, I get hungry sometimes, guys. I was starving. But <laughs> I'm back to try this out some more. Right now, it's not sunny. It is now partly cloudy, which is perfectly fine. We're still going to do good for the, for the pike. And the chubs will probably be a little bit happier about it. So let's bring this back out again. And we're going to give this a few more shots with this particular lure. I love this lure, though. This lure is so good for chubs when it's cloudy. Oh, my goodness. And apparently, it does pretty well on uh, partly sunny and sunny days, too. See? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, guys. Yeah, this is, it's funny that this spot gets overlooked. I don't know why I didn't even 
think about trying over here. See, look at that. It's not bad at all. And it sure didn't take too long. Yeah, you don't have to worry about overcasting this one as much, which is good. But if I latch into something like a really big pike, it may not make it. I can't even imagine pulling a almost 10 kilogram pike out of this place. There we go, close to shore that time. Little bitty chub, little bitty chub. Did I change and put that? No, I did not. Wow, I'm taking a chance. I thought I'd put this on here. Jeez, if I got a really big pike, that'd have been all she wrote. Last time I got a, something seriously big and fought him for a while, and he cut right through that leader. As I just had one of those fluorocarbon leaders. Yeah, those are good for when you're going against trout and stuff, but pike and fish like taimen, forget it. They're, they'll bite right through it. Now, if you hold your rod up like that, you stand less of a chance for them doing it, but it's still more possible for them to do it, because especially if you're pumping it, Yeah, I see people on here, line cut by fish teeth all the time. And I could just see them going, ah, crap, you know. Because <laughs> that's frustrating to sit there and fight a fish and have him bite right through the line like that. That is seriously frustrating. But, you know. Especially if you bounce from lake to lake like I do. You forget you have a fluorocarbon leader on there, and you're like, oh, I'm good. And damn fish bites right through it, and you're like, damn. Because not only do you lose the fish, but you lose the lure, you lose the leader. There we go, we got something here. I think this time it's a little pike. It's looking kind of long. Yep. There you go, guys. As you can see, they are everywhere. And there is another lure that is really good that you can get early on when you first get to this. Some of these are kind of expensive, I will tell you that, honestly. This one's not too bad. This Dragonfly Stream. That one's not too bad, and this one here is not too bad. They're really good. They're cheaper, and they're good ones to start off with. You obviously don't need this heavy of line either, but they tend to go for these pretty darn good. Now, I might have to use the other rod for this because this is kind of small for this rod, but we'll try it. Alright, I think what I'm going to do is change my rods here and try that on this one. I think I have two of them. Yes, I do. Now this one will cast it far. This can handle light lures real well. That's something you got to pay attention to. Now if you're wondering what this particular rod is, it is called the Siberia Model 1 really good and it can handle just about every size lure cost me a pretty penny I'll tell you that much <laughs> I 
but it was worth it and has been worth it. Shouldn't need to upgrade for a while in this one. Well, I'll be darned, he came in close. Little chub. Yeah, I try to mix this up quite a bit. Sometimes I'll do two turns. Sometimes that changes things a little bit. Right now I'm not getting jig steps, but I am getting touching bottom doing that, so... There we go. That's a substantial bite. I think we got us another chub. No, it's a good sized perch. Good sized perch are always good. Well, it's almost getting night here. We're getting pretty close to the end of this episode. I do want to go back to my pink lure here because it just does so well here. And I am determined to get something big to show you guys. So far they've been meh, sort of big. Uh, went over the bridge. I hope I don't get a snag. That was a little too hard. What you do is reel it. And when you hear it go ploop. There it goes. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, usually it doesn't snag, but I'm still not taking that chance. But since it's getting close to being dark, this pink one is usually very, very popular. Like I said, Okay, he still haven't gotten a monster yet, but this isn't a bad one. It might be a perch. If it is, it's a big one. It's just that I thought I saw a little bit of green on him. Yep, it's a pretty good sized perch. Look at that, 1.451. That's not bad. Not bad at all, guys. Not bad at all. Let's try over by that little stick now that I'm over on this end of things here. Ah, oh, overthrew it again. Don't get a snag, don't get a snag, that would be so bad. There it goes. Whew. So easy to do that. <laughs> There we go. I got something this time. Let's see. What we got here? Another pike. Now you get a lot of pike here. They're not very big, most of them, but there are a lot of them here, guys. And we're just about to lose sunlight here, so they're not going to be fish doing much, too much longer. All right, guys, it looks like there's been a change in the weather, and that means that the pike aren't going to bite as much anymore. So, at least not at night. I think this is probably a good place to end this episode, but before that, I'm going to check the cafe, see if there's anything here that they might want. Let's see. Roach, Bream, Xander, Nace... God, an 8.5 kilogram Xander. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, perch. Nope, nothing big enough. Well, it doesn't look like I have anything to trade in. Oh, well. Let's see what we get over here at the market. Yeah, look at that. 378. You get 74 cents for the muscle. That's not bad. Let's see. Which was the best of the pikes? 198 which is not great but yeah once you get over about two kilograms so they really start bringing in some money 
These chubs always do. Look at that, 1057 for that chub. So let's see what we got total. 3813. Not too bad. Not, not for a day's work. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll be back with another episode of Russian Fishing 4. So until then guys, always remember, aim straight, cast far, and have fun. I will see you later. Bye bye.